Hello friends, in today's concept capsule, we are going to talk about what is MMF balance in a transformer. In order to understand the transformer action, it is very important that you understand what is MMF balance. So let us start our discussion. Some of you may be joining me for the first time, so there is a brief introduction about myself. My name is Ashutosh. As you can see on the screen, I have 11 plus years of teaching experience, completed MTech from ITBHU. I have written a couple of books and my expert areas are power system, electrical machines, electromagnetic field theory, material science, engineering ethics and current affairs. So before we talk about the MMF balance, let us talk about transformer action. The most simple understanding of a transformer is that there is a core and in that core we have two windings. One winding we are calling as high voltage winding and the other winding we are calling as low voltage winding. This high voltage and low voltage winding we can also term as primary winding and secondary winding. But I would prefer high voltage and low voltage terminology because the moment you count the number of turns of a particular winding you can very easily identify whether it is high voltage or low voltage. Because EMF induced per turn of a transformer is going to be same for the primary and secondary winding. You must be knowing this. So more number of turns means more EMF, more voltage. But in common practice, we define primary winding as the winding where we generally connect the source. And you know that transformer deals with AC source. Whereas the secondary winding is the winding where we are going to connect the load. So the first thing you have to understand about the transformer action is, suppose you are connecting a source. Suppose you have connected a source, AC source here and suppose you are connecting a load. If you observe properly, there is no direct electrical connection between the primary winding and secondary winding even though these two windings are coupled with each other with the help of this magnetic core. This magnetic core is going to have some magnetic flux. This magnetic flux is also going to be a time varying flux because the source of this flux is time varying that is alternating source. Now once you apply the voltage at the primary winding, what is going to happen for the first time? Please try to understand. When you apply some voltage source, suppose it is Vt, this is going to give rise to a time dependent or AC current IT. This time dependent current is going to circulate in this primary winding like this. Now this current when it flows through this primary winding number of turns it is going to give rise to MMF of the primary winding. This MMF we are calling as N1 I1. Yes or no? This MMF is going to establish a flux in the core. So if you see the MMF at the primary side that is N1 I1 is going to give rise to a time varying flux to be established in the core. Now this time varying flux is also linked with the secondary winding. So definitely some EMF is going to be induced. So you can assume that some EMF is induced at the secondary side. But you please notice that this time varying flux is also linked with the primary winding. So definitely there will be some induced EMF because of the self inductance property of the primary winding at the primary side also. So there is going to be some EMF induced here also E1 T. This is the instantaneous values of E1 and E2 that I am writing. Now what is transformer action? Transformer action is the moment you close the switch at the secondary side, whatever load you are going to connect, that load does not have any source in this circuit. So how you are delivering power to this load even though there is no source connected, directly I am saying. 
there comes the idea of transformer action. The source connected at the primary side is going to supply power to the load which is connected at the secondary side. How this transformer action is possible? Let us try to understand. In order to understand this phenomena, let us divide our discussion into two parts. The first part is transformer at no load and the second part is transformer at some load. Let us talk about transformer at no load. Transformer at no load means that you have connected the source at the primary side, but no load is connected at the secondary side. So I am connecting a source here. Again, this is an alternating source, time dependent source. What will happen? There will be some current. This current is going to flow through this winding and this current will give rise to MMF that is N1 I1 and there will be some induced EMF E1 T. If you talk about the RMS value you can write like this also. Now because this flux is linked with the secondary winding there will be some induced EMF here also that is E2. But you are saying that load is not connected and this transformer secondary is at no load. But at the secondary side there is no load, it means the current is going to be zero. The current is going to be zero. I hope it is clear. Now suppose, now I am going to connect load to my transformer and let us understand how transformer action is going to deliver power to the load when the source is connected to the primary side. If you talk about the transformer at load, again I am connecting a source here. Again there is some current. This current is flowing through the primary winding. Some EMF induced here E1. This is the RMS value, per phase RMS value. Again some EMF is connected, uh, developed here also and now the load is connected. Now this induced EMF E2, if there is a closed circuit, there will be some current. Suppose it is flowing like this, this is I2 current. Now what will happen? The nature of this induced EMF E1 and E2 is going to be such that, its polarity is going to be such that, at all the time these EMF E1 and E2 will try to oppose their own cause as per the Lenz law. Let us talk about the EMF induced at the primary side. At any point of time, suppose we are assuming that this terminal is positive and this terminal is negative. The E1 EMF induced in the primary side is going to oppose to the applied source all the time. So what should be the polarity of E1? The polarity of E1 is going to be plus here and minus here. It is so because if given an opportunity to E1 to circulate its own current, it will try to oppose the cause. What is the cause? The cause is this source, voltage source or the current flowing through this source. So E1 will try to circulate a current which is opposite to the source connected at the primary side. Now you come to the secondary side. The polarity of E2 is going to be such that it will generate a current, that current is I2, that this current when circulates in the secondary winding, it will develop the MMF into I2. And what is the nature of this MMF at the secondary side? This secondary side MMF N2 I2 will try to oppose its own cause. What is its cause? Its cause is time varying flux. It means this N2 I2 is going to develop a flux which is going to oppose the flux in the main core of the transformer. But please remember one thing. You cannot change those things in your life which you can't decide. The flux in the core is not decided by the current in the secondary side or the EMF induced in the secondary side. The flux in the core is decided by the source connected at the primary side. 
It means this MMF wants to reduce the value of flux in the core, but the flux in the core cannot be reduced instantaneously simply because flux is decided by the source. So what will happen? In order to keep intact this flux in the core as it is, more amount of current is going to be drawn from the supply. Are you getting this? So let us assume, let us assume, I will come to this diagram again. Let us assume at no load, the current at the primary side of the transformer is simply I0. When no load is connected to the secondary. When you connect some load to the transformer at the load condition, now I am assuming this current I1 is going to be equal to I0 plus I2 dash. Now you will ask me, sir, I0 is okay. What is this I2 dash? Please understand. This I2 dash is the current which is responsible for the transformer action to take care of the load. How much extra current to be taken from the supply? This is the extra current taken from the supply because the load is now connected at the secondary side. Now please try to understand how we have achieved this particular equation. We achieved this particular equation with the help of MMF balance. How you are balancing the MMF in the transformer? If I ask you, suppose I1 is the total current, it is divided into I0, I0 is the no load current and I2 dash, we will discuss what is this I2 dash. Let us try to talk about this particular diagram. What is the total MMF at the primary side? The total MMF at the primary side is N1, I1. So I am writing here MMF balance. The total MMF at the primary side is going to be N1, I1. Now this MMF has two responsibilities. The first responsibility is to establish flux in the core. For that purpose, we already have no load current. Because when no load is connected at the secondary side, the only purpose of drawing some current from the supply is to establish flux in the core. That MMF required to establish flux in the core is going to be N1 I0 because I0 is the current at the no load taken from the supply. And this current is again flowing in the primary winding, so I am using N1 number of tons. The second responsibility of this primary side MMF is to counterbalance the MMF because of the current in the secondary winding. You remember? You remember the MMF at the secondary side N2 I2. This MMF has to be counterbalanced because we want to keep the flux intact in the core of the transformer. It means this primary side MMF has two responsibilities. Number one, establishing flux in the core plus counterbalancing the MMF at the secondary side because the load is now connected. If you divide this whole equation by N1, you will get I1 is equal to I0 plus N2 by N1 and this is I2. Now this value we are defining as I2 dash. I hope you are getting this. So I1 is going to be I0 plus I2 dash. Is it clear everybody? So this is how we define the MMF balance and how MMF balance actually gives the transformer action in a transformer. Thank you so much for watching this concept capsule. Subscribe to Baiju's exam prep for more such informative videos. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Thank you.